All right, everyone, now we have to talk about Trump's Dallas rally, which was a couple of days ago, and, and compare and contrast it to what we're seeing among the Democrats. Trump held a Dallas, uh, rally in Dallas, and several tens of thousands of people showed up, packed the whole stadium almost completely. There were thousands of people in overflow. It was huge. Um, now, I understand that this is Texas. Texas is a Republican state, largely. Dallas, however, is really fairly blue, and, and the idea that Trump has lost steam or is he's, he's on the down slope, people aren't as excited about him, is, is kind of refuted by this. Because this is a similar sort of rally size and energy level as what he had in 2016, or similar to what he's had over the last few years. It shows no decline in Trump's popularity. Also, look at it this way. If you match Trump's numbers up, the number of people attending his rallies to see him speak, with any of the Dem candidates, there's no comparison to be made. The Democrats struggle to get two or 3,000 people to listen to them. And this is the, from the top-line candidates. Joe Biden? Joe Biden, oh my God, he makes Hillary Clinton look uh, good by comparison, as far as his little get-togethers. Elizabeth Warren, I suppose, is the closest thing to a heavy-hitting Democrat as far as that goes, other than Bernie Sanders. The problem for Bernie Sanders being he's been on the decline for now quite a few months. He's had a health issue. It doesn't look good for him in the polls. He seems to have lost a couple points of support. He's a distant third now. There's not that much time for him to make up lost time. I think that the, you're seeing support levels congeal behind the candidates. The problem is that Bernie Sanders' star power from 2016 formed a significant bulwark against people early on, but it's never actually led to him increasing his his level of support there are too many people in the field that are also on the left so they're drowning bernie sanders that he's no longer even on the far left according to these people kamala harris and elizabeth warren have both gone further left than him they're not being authentic about it i'm not saying that they're being honest about their views but they've outflanked him on give give free shit out sort of platforming here's the thing if donald trump can pull in a crowd that's arguably larger than all of the largest crowds pulled in by every individual Democratic candidate combined, don't you think there's an enthusiasm gap here? If, if Elizabeth Warren is going to a venue in a deep blue state, in an urban area, should she not be able to pull in if her popularity is similar and the energy level and the turnout will be similar? If, if everything else is equal, shouldn't she be able to turn out crowds like this? Instead, when I pointed out the funny truth, which is that there's no comparison, somebody there on Twitter tried to debate the point by showing me an article showing Elizabeth Warren with like two or 3,000 people at a rally. It was a month old. They had to dig back a month to find a single Warren rally that had numbers that were even in the decent four-figure range. Trump's talking about five figures. What happens if Trump decides to have one big-ass national rally and says, well, we're going to plan it a month in advance, we're going to get like 50, 60,000 people packed into this football stadium, and, and then another 10,000 in overflow, and it just looks like an army of red hats shouting, make America great again. The optics of the situation do begin to matter. At some point, this demoralizes the Democrats. They're going to look at the sort of rallies they're having, the sort of rallies Trump is having, and there's no comparison. There's also the digital comparison. In today's era, era <laughs> well, in today's era, you know, a little bit of a Freudian slip, maybe. In today's era, online audience matters too. It's free publicity. Basically, people who can't physically be there at the Trump rally can still be at the Trump rally. For all intents and purposes, watching pretty much live with maybe a five-second delay, it's the next best thing. You know, you've got your great big sound system, and you're like, oh, this is going to be great, and you get your chips and dip. You're, you're vegan casserole, I'm sure, if you're watching a Trump rally, uh, unironically. Uh, and, and, you know, you sack out and you watch the presidential speech. How many people are watching the Democratic rallies that are being held as opposed to the Trump rallies? Not nearly as many. Look look at the online metrics. With Trump, 50,000 people watching the live stream. Or, you know, uh, Booty, uh, not Booty Judge, Beto O'Rourke. Great example. Now, this is dated. This is months ago. Remember the El Paso competing rallies in the wake of the fracas down there? Beto gets into the race. He decides... Well, Trump's holding a rally down here in El Paso to talk about his evil orange man xenophobia. We're going to show him, people of El Paso. He decides to hold his own counter rally. Initial claims, and, and this it, it boggles the mind how they thought this was a good propaganda idea. They tried to claim that Beto's rally was larger. 
Beto himself, on his own official Twitter, took a picture of the rally. Well, had a picture taken. There were a couple thousand people there. There's a lot of people, I mean, all things considered, but it's, it wasn't nearly as large as Trump's rally. He was running at 15,000, with several thousand more that were unable to get in an overflow. They had to pull out all the stops. It was funny because uh, they claimed that the fire commissioner or something had claimed that Beto had more people at the rally, and it was flat out false. It wasn't even coming from the fire department. You could see it literally for yourself because we had pictures and footage from both rallies, and it was just a big shit storm of propaganda. He tried to show Trump up, and he fucking failed. And think about it, Beto at the time was riding high. He was the, the man of the hour. Oh, we almost beat Ted Cruz. Yeah, we threw tens of millions of extra dollars into a, a t what should have been a tight race against a relatively unpopular Ted Cruz, and he still lost by a significant margin. Congrats, Beto! You, you get a gold star for effort. That's basically what they gave him. Beto holds his rally and fucking fails. Uh, Trump completely destroys him. He's destroying the Democrats now. Nothing's changed. If nothing else changes, he's going to coast to re-election just because the Democrats will have a weak standard bearer who will not be able to generate high turnout. The, the whole orange man bad thing may work among the far left of the electorate for turnout purposes. They would already turn out in large numbers. But because they tend to be the youngest side of the Democratic electorate, their turnout's not going to be high even if it's high. The Democrats need to buckle down and form a platform and try to inject some sanity back into the race. They need to try to find a way to congeal the party together. They're failing. Impeachment hasn't cemented them together. Tulsi Gabbard is an evil Russian, hasn't helped cement them together. Trump is just a bad, evil person, hasn't cemented them together. You've got a packed field of people with various ideas, some of which are now hostile towards the DNC because they can see the writing on the wall. CNN and the DNC, the Perez's and the Jeff Zucker's of the world have already chosen the candidates that they find palatable. They're supporting them to the exclusion of others, namely Warren and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to some extent. They don't want Bernie Sanders because they know he'd lose because he's a socialist and he's also almost 80. They don't want Booty Judge because he just hasn't gained traction, although I think that you know, maybe the Zucker side doesn't care as much. And they don't want anyone like Yang or Gabbard or Klobuchar gaining any leverage at all because they're actually willing to come out swinging. They don't want that to happen. They're afraid it'll weaken their position against Trump, but you've already weakened it. The position can't get any weaker. Your position is, 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 it makes no sense. The Democratic Party isn't offering anybody anything. That's the problem. I'm, I'm looking at the platforms I'm seeing. What am I being offered as an average independent voter uh, in the middle class? You're saying you want to raise my taxes, endanger my community. You don't want to secure the border because Orange Man suggested doing that. You're, you're now clamoring for war in the Middle East, more troop deployments. There's nothing there that I want to support. It's not the same Democratic Party it was maybe 20 years ago. It's completely different. The Democratic Party, and maybe at the dawn of the Bush era, was like, no censorship, question authority, um, you know, we want to go after maybe the, the mega corporations, especially the Chinese back ones, which is hilarious in retrospect. The globalists, they would even use that term. I remember like the zeitgeist era in the mid-2000s. Now we don't hear that anymore. Now they think that the, their former positions they now call conspiracy theories. They've, I guess they absorbed so many Never Trump neocons that brought their corporate cash to the Democratic Party that the Democrats have become like the Bush Republicans. That's really what they've begun to resemble. Even one of their mainline candidates says, Jesus, Jesus now. That wouldn't have happened. And he's a gay dude. So <laughs> that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. It's very funny to see them uh, tie themselves into knots trying to sell themselves to the American public. I don't care if the matchup says, well, if Biden is the candidate, he'll win by 10 points. No, he won't. He'll lose. He would absolutely lose against Donald Trump. It would be it by a legendary margin. I don't think there'd be a close popular vote either. I think Trump would sweep that as well. It would be a referendum on the Democrats that'll crush him out for several cycles to come. By the way, it might lead to Mike Pence being elected next. Or whoever comes, it might be Ted Cruz. Maybe Trump throws his weight behind a Ted Cruz run. You can guarantee he's geared up for it. He's definitely maneuvered himself into a position uh, to do that. Marco Rubio comes to mind. He had viability last time around. He could theoretically run. He's, he, again, like Ted Cruz, he's on the younger side. Rand Paul could make a run. I'd support him if he did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one, of, one of the people that's stymieing the rest of Congress that's trying to keep us in Syria. Fuck Congress. You suck. Get out of the way. That's about all.
Peace out.